The equation 4y squared minus x squared plus 2x equals 2 is called an implicit equation. The x's and the y's are mixed up within the equation. Um, we're not looking at something that's like an f of x equals function. And the graphs of these equations um, aren't necessarily graphs of functions. Um, they might not pass the vertical line test. We can have an input value x that has multiple output values y. And so when we're looking at these uh, equations, we're really not going to first solve for y equals. Um, sometimes that's possible, uh, sometimes it's not. And so we have a different um, method for taking the derivative, and it's called implicit differentiation. Our goal is still to find dy dx, uh, the change in y with respect to x. And uh, the concept with uh, this dy dx is really, it's y prime, it's the derivative of y. Um, so when we're looking at an implicit equation, um, the one thing that I always try to remember here is y is special, um, x is not. Okay, so um, when we're taking the derivative of y uh, with respect to x, we have this special thing dy dx. But see, when we take the derivative of x with respect to x, derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And so that's why it's not kind of this special extra thing that has to be handled. And so for implicit differentiation, it's really two steps. Uh, we take d dx of both sides, and then we solve for dy dx. So we d dx both sides first. So we have d dx of the left-hand side here is 4y squared minus x squared plus 2x. And then we ddx the uh, right-hand side. Okay. So the derivative here of the left-hand side, we see that the left-hand side has three terms separated by addition and subtraction. So we can still use the sum and difference rules to be able to take the derivative term by term. So um, when we're taking the derivative of the first term, we've got the derivative of 4y squared. So this looks like it's a constant multiple rule with a power rule. But actually, it's a chain rule. Um, in addition to that, because we have these variables that don't match. The y is special because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. And so we have um, the 4 times uh, the 2 that we bring down, the power 2. We have our inside function y, where we now drop the power by 1. But see, here's where the chain rule comes into play. We have to take the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. And so that's where we have dy dx that comes out. So that's the derivative of the first term. The next two terms have x only in it. And so when we're taking the derivative with respect to x of these terms, they're just the normal terms that we've been um, taking derivatives of. Um, up to this point. And so we have um, minus the derivative of x squared, so we bring down the 2, we drop the power by 1 to get our uh, derivative there as uh, minus 2x, and then we have plus the derivative of 2x. So the derivative of 2x is simply 2, um, the constant multiple times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is just the 1. Moving to the other side of the equal sign, the derivative of the constant 2 is uh, 0. So now let's just write this slightly nicer. We've got um, 4 times 2, which is 8. Uh, y to the 2 minus 1 is just y to the first power. And we have dy dx. Uh, we have the terms minus 2x plus 2 equals 0. And remember, we're trying to find dy dx. So in this particular example, we only have one copy of dy dx sitting there. And so we want to isolate dy dx. We want to get it by itself. So let's first move uh, these two terms to the other side using addition and subtraction. So that leaves us with the term 8y dy dx, the only term that has dy dx with it. And we're going to get the non-dy dx terms on the other side through addition and subtraction. So the minus 2x, we'd have to add 2x to both sides. And the plus 2, we'd have to subtract 2 to both sides to balance our equation. So now we have um, something out in front times dy dx on one side, and then something that is completely free of dy dx on the other side. So to get dy dx by itself, we have to divide both sides now 
by the 8y, the thing that's sitting in front of the dy dx, being multiplied by the dy dx. So that would be our dy dx. Uh, we could see this slightly more simplified if we were to pull out a common factor of 2 from the top. And that would reduce here with the, um, the 8 would have a factor of 2 that could reduce. So we have a 2 over 8, which is really a 1 over 4. So we would have the x minus 2 on the top and the 4. Oh, let me, let me pull out the 2 correctly. Let's try this again. When I pull out a common factor of 2, I pull out the 2 from both pieces. So that would leave me with... Uh, 2 times x minus 1, and then so that factor there that's left over when I reduce is the x minus 1. So that's our answer for dy dx.